my son and I were first introduced to Steve Light through this book festival about two years ago, and so it's my honor to introduce him to you all now. Uh, Mr. Light worked as an illustrator in the corporate world and has designed buttons that were uh, acquired by and even shown at the uh, Cooper Hewitt Design Museum. Uh, he began writing and illustrating children's books when he was teaching four or five year olds and thought, why not illustrate my own books? Um, he's even produced his own children's TV show pilot, Storytime with Steve Light. Uh, Kirkus Reviews has said that the result of his books is so wonderfully textural, children will be tempted to touch, and adult readers and their young listeners may even be inspired to try their own hands at stamping with thick, gooey paint, uh, saying this all about his latest book, Blackbird, Yellow Sun. Uh, he collects fountain pens and still teaches children, and his greatest joy is being able to share stories with children and introduce them to new worlds uh, that they can never only visit with their imaginations. Uh, Barnsley Elementary School teacher Kara Schoem gave us our first Steve Light book, uh, Diggers Go, um, which he signed for us <laughs> back then, two years ago. And my son has been obsessed with those books ever since, and I get to read them every night, uh, sometimes multiple times before <laughs> bed. <laughs> uh, so it's been an honor. Love-hate relationship. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sole mio was a big phrase in our house. <laughs> um, but beyond those books, he is also the author uh, and illustrator of Lucky Lazlo, Swap, Have You Seen My Dragon, Trucks Go, Cards Go, Planes Go, Diggers Go. <laughs> A wide variety of them. Uh, he will be signing books immediately after the presentation, and copies of the books, and I encourage you to pick some up, are on sale in the Politics and Prose tent. His next book, Builders and Breakers, will be out in October. And now, ladies, gentlemen, young ladies, and young gentlemen, please welcome Steve Light. All right. So, um, most of my books are very intricate line work, like Dragon and Swap. Um, and I use fountain pens to draw the work. Um, mostly adults here, so I guess you guys kind of know what those are, so I'm not going to go into what it is. Um, and so, uh, for the board books, I started to do some board books with Candlewick, and I wanted to do something completely different, and I have a great art director there, and she said, I just want you to make art. I was like, wow, okay. So, um, with Blackbird, I actually used cardboard pieces that I cut out and printed. I actually brought some of them to show you guys. So this is the actual cardboard piece. On this page, you'll notice it's a little smaller. The book was actually done six by six. When I delivered the finished art, they said, what if we made it a little bigger and blew it up? And that really made all the texture come alive and you can it feels like you can touch the thing. Um, I don't like really glossy books for me, the glare and stuff. I, so I really fought to get a matte finish on the pages, especially the cover. The inside is a little less matte, but still matte. Um, and I, I think it really helps with the colors and everything. Um, it's a really simple book, um, going through the bird's day about the colors, blackbird yellow sun, blackbird orange leaves, blackbird purple grapes, blackbird green grass, blackbird red snake, and blackbird gray rocks, blackbird pink flowers. Oh, did we do red snake? Yeah. Blackbird blue moon is the end. And so, there's an artist called Ellsworth Kelly, who does these big, bold, just colored paintings of just shapes. And that was my inspiration um, for the book, and to do this black shape against the colors. Um, so I have originally started to try to paint the shapes, but it was too flat and everything. And I had a little piece of cardboard on my desk, and I had all this paint and everything, and I put some paint on it, and it was just an interesting shape and it was from something else, and I stamped it, and it kind of gave that texture, and I said, oh, that's the kind of texture that I want. So this is the sun, and this is the moon from the back page. Um, it's important to me, I like when things aren't perfect. I, you know, I could have used a template and made this perfectly round. I think things are more interesting to your eye when they're not perfect, like drawing the buildings in, in Dragon. I didn't use a ruler for any of them, I just drew them freehand, and they're a little wobbly sometimes, but I think that those imperfections make things really interesting. Um, so this is like a really fun thing that you can do with kids is just cut out. This is just like chipboard from the back of like a legal pad, but I buy it in a, you know, I buy a bunch of sheets at once. Um, this was my great invention was doing these little uh, tape tags because 
every time I stamped it, the, the print I used printing ink, uh, speed bowl, water, water printing ink. Every time I would stamp it, it kind of sticks. And I would go to grab it, and I would get fingerprints on the edge. So by having this, I could kind of break that seal enough to pull it up, and that really made it um, easier. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram um, or Facebook, um, I'm Stevlight on Instagram. Um, I have a video of me printing the green grass page, so you can see me printing that. The the blackbird is black colored paper, and the orange worm is uh, orange paper. So originally, the color orange was going to be the worm, and he was going to get eaten by the bird. But publishers don't risque anymore. Uh, you know, I love the old books like by Tommy Unger and stuff that have all these like, you know, crazy things happening in them. Um, and so I, you know, at first I was like, oh, but then when I did the, uh, the orange leaves, I'm really happy with this page. This is all one piece. So I just designing it to make all the leaves touch so that it's one piece of cardboard. Then these lines are actually just using, um, this is round, but a squared off piece just the edge of the cardboard to print those those lines. Um, it was really fun to try to do such a simple book. It's so much harder because there's so few words and I wanted the pictures to be so clean and graphic and you know, um, I have pages and pages of these drawings um, of just trying to get the shapes just right. Um, Purple Grapes was actually the hardest one. I, I did. I did pages and pages of sketches and like five or six finished printed ones um, of grapes until they looked enough like grapes. Um, it was fun to print the green over the black paper and you still see it and everything. I like that. I like for people. I feel I love some computer work is amazing that um, illustrators are doing now on the computer, but I feel like. I like to see the process. I like to see that there's a piece of paper underneath there, like it was made, it was something made. Um, the snake, the, the little shapes in the snake are actually stencils. So I cut out the shape of the red out of cardboard, but then I cut out the little lines and, and stenciled those with brush. There's a lot, I'm doing another board book very similar in style called Mama Tiger Baby Cub, and there's a lot more stenciling work. It's a lot more fun, it's really fun. Gray rocks I was really worried about because I thought it was going to be really boring because it's gray, but I kind of made these blues and purple grays, and it's actually one of my favorite ones because, you know, he gets scared from the snake. It's hard to show all this emotion in a character that, you know, you, ha you don't have any real words and it's really simple, but he's scared from the red snake and then he flies away, but his little worm friend is coming, you know, he's getting there. He could fly, so he got there, but it, I really feel like he feels lonely and scared there, and then, of course, we needed to do something fun like pink flowers, like they're okay, you know, they're, they're, they're back and everything. So, um, doing the different shades of pink too, I used the speedball printing inks, which actually mix really well, but it was mixing a lot of different colors and everything. Um, I have a strange, like, memory of colors. I'll remember things as a different color, and my wife sometimes helps me mix colors, and sometimes I see colors as different, and I'm like, this is blue, right? And she's like, that's green. And I'm like, okay. So, but I'm not colorblind, because all those tests with the numbers, with the little dots, I can do, but I just have like a weird memory thing with colors. So my wife is always checking my colors for me and everything. Um, a trick I learned about colors is, you know, if you use a color straight out of the tube, it's kind of too strong. So like with red, you would mix the complementary color, the color that's opposite on the color wheel. So just a drop of red, a drop of green in the red, just tones it down a little bit. Um, and the same with the pink. The pink obviously is red and white, but there's a little bit of green in the red before I added the white. Um, and then a little bit of uh, blue to get the little purple uh, tone. Um, the same with the green. The green has a little bit of red in it just to kind of tone it down so it's not this bright acid kind of um, straight from the tube kind of color. Um, I was going to show you, so I, I draw all the time. Um, and this is just the sketchbook that I have with me now, which is a totally, a little bit more of the graphic line quality of, um, of something that I'm working on now about um, a place called Whiskers Hollow, where the animals drive cars. And um, we have some cars somewhere. So there's a, there's a donkey, a bear, a rabbit, and a mouse, and a tow truck that's drove, driven by the elephant. 
here's the character driving. Here's their their uh, mother or someone. The donkey drives a scooter and he collects junk. And they get stuck in the mud. So I'm using today as reference for this new book, which is really great. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Oh, there's their car. So the, the bear drives a truck, a pickup truck, and the mouse drives a little, um, one of those little tiny uh, cars, and the rabbit drives a wagon and the, and the donkey a scooter. So, um, but I'm constantly drawing, and it was nice to draw for, for Blackboard. I actually used, for the sketches in my sketchbook, I just used um, China markers because they just, I only had a few colors, and just to keep it really simple. Um, it was originally, uh, it was actually, this book actually started out about, um, so the sun is still there, but it was about, I was gonna do a book on fire <laughs> for, for a board book, which isn't really that PC, you know, for kids to think about fire that much, so um, it quickly changed. But, um, you know, I wanna do like water and fire, like opposites like that, but the yeah, fire is not like, you know, so, um, but do you guys have any questions or anything or anything else? Or would you like me to draw? I can draw some Blackbird stuff or uh, what do you think? We'll draw a Blackbird? All right. I only have four colors, so pick the color. Who wants to pick the color? Color? pick the color? Pick one of these colors. Orange, okay. So we're going to do the orange leaves then, okay? All right, I'm going to move these. Never use these markers. Oh, we need more ink. Hold on. We need to scrap this paper. All right, here we go. Is it good orange? like this orange? said it's all they're all cut out of cardboard so to to design the leaves where they're all touching and, and I cut it out of one piece was really um, changed the design of the way I would normally design or draw that kind of thing you know um, I got these really industrial uh, scissors so that I could actually cut the cardboard with scissors instead of an exacto so I could just really cut out these really basic graphic shapes it was really fun if you've ever seen Matisse doing his paper cuts and he has these huge scissors and everything so I was like trying to kind of channel him. How many more leaves do you think we need before we draw the bird? Ten more? Ten total. How many do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Oh, we're getting drips and everything. It's very artistic. <laughs> Andy Warhol's first paintings, they had drips in the and the his his manager came in and he goes, I like these, but why are all the drips? And he goes, Well it's not art if it doesn't have drips, because back then it was like Jackson Pollock and everything. And so his his manager convinced him he doesn't need the drips, you know. Well, it's a drippy sort of thing. Yeah, it's a drippy kind of thing. Now, should our bird be flying or sitting on a branch? What do you think? Flying or sitting? Sitting. Okay. So, I'm going to draw the, the branch is actually black in the book, so I'm going to draw the branch black here. It's in shadow.
the bird. Mm -hmm. yeah. So much different drawing standing up. Go, we got orange leaves, blackbird orange leaves. Yeah. You guys have any other questions? Can I use the red to draw the lines? The hardest thing was not to do lines on all the leaves. Because it looks better when you don't do all the lines. So for me, like like dragging and everything, it was like drawing more and more and more and more. And I even have to pencil out areas where the type's gonna go so I don't draw there. Um, so with this, it was like really controlling myself that I that I don't draw everything everywhere and, and really think about the economy of what I was doing. So it was a really nice change. I call the board books my palette cleansers because after working on a really complicated picture book, to go to the board books, which are fewer pages, but more graphic and much simpler, but a totally different kind of way. Um, it's really, it's really a pleasure. Any other questions? Yes. Another question. So on the uh, sound books. <laughs> on the what? The sound books. Yes. Go, got to ask the question. Where do, where do the sounds come from? Okay. So that's a really funny story because I went in to show a publisher some books and I had three like really thought out, finished, complete book proposals. But uh, and. Like a month before, I had a little boy in my class that was drawing, all he would draw is trucks, and always green, and he would do little red dots for the lights. And I was fascinated when he was drawing, like the joy that he had from drawing, and I was kind of frazzled and just like, oh. So I went out to visit my mom, we went to Michael's, I said I'm just gonna buy like three colors, and I bought a dowel to make into a stick and a really cheap brush. I sat on my mom's kitchen table like I used to when I was a kid, and I painted some trucks. And I totally forgot about them. I threw them in this portfolio. It happened to be the portfolio that I brought these three presentations to. Did my big presentations. Number one, number two, number three, blah, 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 blah. And then I was putting it all away, and I reached, and there was something in the portfolio. And I took the drawings of the trucks out, put them on the table just to put everything else away. What's this? Oh, just some trucks that I painted. It was a boy in my class. Oh, these are great. Oh, we can do them. For some reason, I did them that shape. I don't know why I did them just the bottom, the long side of a 9 by 12 piece of crystal. And they're like, oh, we can make them this big. And, and, and I, I don't, the sounds, I think, was the editor at, that I was working with at the time just said, oh, we could just do like the sounds that they made. You know, because I was saying that the, the little boy made the sounds like the drool. The, that's actually, now you, you made me remember it. I didn't remember that. He used to, you know, brrr, as he was doing it. And so, oh, we could do the sounds of the different trucks that they make, and that's that's how they want, they happen. And then we did trains go, and trucks, uh, diggers go, and planes go, and boats go. There's six of them. So, and then it was like, okay, I can't do any more goes. Um, they mentioned, like, bicycles go, or scooter go, and I was like, mm, you know, I like the industrial thing, so... And um, that was with Chronicle, and I'm with Candlewick with my picture books, and they said, we would love to do board books with you, original board books. So that's why we have Have You Seen My Lunchbox, and then now Blackbird and Mama Tiger Baby Cub will come out next year. So, um, yeah. So it's, it's funny how those things happen. It's always the thing that you're not chasing, you know, that catches you. <laughs> so, and I love those books, and they're so much fun to do. Trains, I mean, when I did trains, my brother and I were such train kids. He called me, he's like, are you going to put this train in and this train in, you know? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I love doing those books. I love anything industrial. I love drawing machines. 
and things. I don't know why. I used to take my phone apart as a kid, and then it would ring, and my mom would yell at me to put it back together so she could answer it. And you know, I used to take apart all kinds of things. And I had three sisters, so my dad moved me down to the basement where his workshop. My he made a room for me, but through the door was his workshop, and I used to just go in there and build and make things and stuff. So anytime I could make something, or I feel like I'm making when I'm drawing, you know, things that I can. Yeah. You know, so. I didn't. I took it so it was an old phone. It's called a rotary phone. I mean, it had a dial that went around, and I was always curious how the dial would always come back. And so I, I took it apart. I unscrewed all the parts. But if you remember how, if you lay it out a certain way, you'll remember how to put it back together. The problem is, I left the bell attached, and everything was still at, like working, but apart, and it rang. And my mom was like, "I need to answer the phone. This is before answering machines, or you had your phone in your pocket." You had it attached to the wall, or like to a cord on the, attached to the wall. So I had to quickly put it back together so she could answer it. So. <laughs> but now you carry your phone and a computer in your pocket, so it's totally different. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Builders and Breakers comes out in October, and that's all the things I love: the cranes in New York City, and the construction, and the digging, and and you know they're excavating, and there's you see all the dirt, but you see I hid like dinosaur bones in the dirt and stuff like that, so it was really fun. So a lot, really fun book. So.